I asked five engineers for their best advice for engineering graduates looking for their first job. And I think they had some really amazing insights to share. So I want to share them with you. Let's dive right in. What advice would you give someone looking for their first job or looking maybe for their first trainee program? For a trainee program, I would say start early and just apply, apply, apply. Because there's so many, but they're competitive. So I got a lot of rejections too and a lot of stupid interviews. But at the end, you just have to keep on going until you find something. And my grades were never that good. I think people should know this after saying that I was not a good student. <laughs> but still, I got hired. So that doesn't mean that every company looks at grades. And there are a lot of companies that do. Don't get me wrong, but lots of companies also just look at personality. And that's what I really enjoy at Scania, at least. So find a company that also suits you. And if you get rejected, there's probably a reason that it could not suit you. So I applied to a lot of companies that definitely did not suit me. <laughs> the thing with the first jobs is you have to like balance between overthinking it and underthinking it. Because you can overthink all day and be like, oh, I want to have the perfect job at the perfect industry and the perfect manager. And then you can also underthink it and be like, I just need a job. Just give me anything. So it's a mix. And so the two things I say to look for for anyone looking for a job is one, be careful what industry you start in, because it will probably be the industry you'll be in for a very long time. Right now, I'm, I've am i been in the semiconductor industry, right? So I've taken on different roles, different companies, but they're all within the same industry. So you can get away with kind of jumping around because you're in the same industry. And that's a huge advantage thinking about it ahead of time, because I kind of started in the construction industry along with semiconductor, right? So then I realized, oh, to get out of construction, it's very difficult. You almost have to like go backwards. So just be careful what industry you start in. If you wanted to move an industry later on, it's a little bit more, it takes a little bit more navigating. And then the second thing that I, I swear by is to focus on the manager. It doesn't matter about the company. Company doesn't matter. They're not really like the company itself. There's going to be people within and your manager is going to be have the most impact on your day to day life. Right. This is somebody you're working with every day, eight hours a day. They tell you what to do. They give you feedback and you don't want to be with a horrific manager. So my first job, I had a really, really terrible manager <laughs> and I did not know it because it was my first job. And when I say that person shattered my self-esteem day in, day out, like just crying after work, just feeling really insecure about my abilities. And, you know, I'm graduating top of the class and I come in the industry and this person just wrecked everything. And I didn't really get it. But then after I got, you know, a couple newer managers later on, I was like, oh, that I should have focused on the manager because <laughs> now I have a really awesome manager who like believes in me, gives me great feedback. The way they give you feedback is very important. And when I go into jobs, I ask, how do you give feedback? Because if they use shaming tactics, I'm not into it. You know, if they give you actually good, solid advice and they're supportive, great. But sometimes you have managers who give you very, very um, shame, shaming like tactics, like having you read things out loud in front of your coworkers. I've had that. And it's just like demeaning stuff just to like make you feel like crappy about yourself in effort that you will change it. That's not the way I'm motivated. So just knowing yourself and then trying to find a good manager in the right industry will really like set you set you up for success. If you have the opportunity to do an internship during your university degree, please do that. I did two of them. I did also slightly longer internships than I had to just so I could get like a bit more like proper exposure. Both of those internships were super valuable for me to navigate in my job market just a little bit. It helped me just enough to figure out, okay, I think audio product development is probably something that I would like to do just enough for me to say, yes, okay, I will apply to audio product development engineer positions and kind of have enough confidence to say, yes, you know, this, I have a you know, qualifications for this. <laughs> I can do this. You should maybe think about how much you want to work in a corporate environment. I think you should think about whether you'd rather work in a large or a small company. What I understand is that I guess it makes a large difference for how you feel whether you work 
in like a very corporate environment or a semi-corporate environment where, you know, you're still obviously somehow in a profit-driven business, but maybe it's a smaller business with a product that you really believe in, or maybe, you know, maybe it's something more artistic and all of those are, are great options. But I also do think that the type of work can differ quite greatly. Maybe try to figure that out first. I don't know whether this is a problem that you have, but, you know, I, I want to know things in a lot of detail and i think i had to you know kind of accept that there was a fair amount of uncertainty kind of un not knowing what working as an audio engineer was exactly like and just trusting that i would be qualified for that with the with the degree that i have which i'm sitting now on the other side of that process can happily say it turns out i am so that's good. I could think if you manage to get an engineering degree, then whether you believe it or not, that does qualify you to do engineering work. Sounds maybe like super stupid, but this is definitely something that I didn't necessarily believe in the past. What advice would you give someone looking for their first job in your industry? If we are talking about energy industry, it's super broad. Like you can do any kind of engineering stuff in the energy and maybe not even engineering related. But I think just probably be open minded to take any kind of opportunity you can have and understand it a little bit more and don't be afraid for changes because energy is so many different resources and it's also really easy to switch from one to another. You can maybe work for a wind power uh, company now, but maybe next day you can work for a hydropower company. That's also energy industry. So even though they, they sound super different, but there must be something similar to each other so be open-minded to take any kind of opportunity that you have so get your foot in the door where it's easy and then you can switch to yeah i think so yeah if someone's looking to get into traffic engineering you gotta get internship or entry-level experience like that's i know i've mentioned it before but that's so key it's even more important because there's not a lot of traffic engineers out there in terms of the other types of civil engineering um, disciplines and traffic engineering is a very niche kind of sub-discipline so in order to get in to get your foot in the door you kind of need to try to get as much as you can working on your side and if you have any prior experience, like traffic engineering experience that you can put on your resume, I mean, that's the thing that we look for first when um, people are, are applying for jobs. Then also, you definitely need to network. When I was in college, I didn't network as much. I was kind of the person who just sent my resumes, you know, like a, hundreds of times. <laughs> it's it's important to like know the people in the industry because there's not that many people. There's not as a lot of traffic engineers. It's important to get to know who they are because really they're the key to other traffic engineers, right? The people who, who are going to be working for them. So, you know, get to know people, get to, you know, make connections. It's a lot easier to do it now than it was back then. I mean, there's just so many tools now available, social media, LinkedIn and stuff like that. So I think it should be no excuse. Like that's how I, how I would do it if I was today. You can watch the full interviews with all of these people on the Fresh Engineer podcast, which I will link down below. And I just wanted to summarize my five favorite tips when looking for your first engineering job. Tip number one, seek out internship opportunities and other ways to get practical experience, both to make yourself a more interesting candidate and to help you understand what kind of work you actually enjoy doing. Tip number two, try to find a company that suits you in terms of size and also in terms of priorities and expectations. So if you have bad grades, apply to a company that values personality more. If you care about work-life balance a lot, apply to a company that prioritizes that. Tip number three, build your network and use your connections to find new job opportunities. You can reach out to your connections or honestly even strangers who work at companies you're interested in and see if they're willing to talk to you about what it's like to work there and what kind of people are a good fit to work there. Just make sure to show that you really value their time and to not ask for recommendations from people who have never work with you because that comes across as scammy and makes them not want to talk to you at all. So information, yes. Recommendation, no. Tip number four, prioritize the right manager over the right job. The right manager is someone who you get along with, who sees potential in you and is going to push you to be your best and 
help you grow. Even if it's not exactly the job you want, it's so much better than having your dream job with a manager who doesn't support you at all and keeps you small. And tip number five is a point that I would like to add to all of the great points raised by the other engineers and that is to prioritize quality over quantity when applying to jobs. Don't send the same CV to hundreds of companies. Only apply to the companies and positions that you really want to work in and then fully adapt your CV and cover letter to each job description. Read up on the company and prepare what you want to emphasize in the interview and the questions you want to ask them to see if they're a great fit for you as well. Quality over quantity. I really hope this helps you find your first job. Feel free to let me know in the comments how your job search is going and if you have any additional questions. And when you do find that job, you might want to know the do's and don'ts of working as an engineer so that you don't make any awkward mistakes, <laughs> which I talk about in this video about the unspoken rules of engineering.